On this episode of New Mexico Frontiers, Sandia National Labs are working on big things using the smallest tools known to man. How they're fueling the next generation of supercomputers and racing to make the world's smallest atomic clock. Plus, we're meeting a New Mexico Tech student who recently got a boost in his education thanks to a national player in defense engineering. And making a play in the yacht world in a landlocked state. Meet the entrepreneur who is bringing the enchanted life to the land of enchantment. New Mexico Frontiers starts right now. This is New Mexico Frontiers. Presented by Ferris Research. Hello and welcome to this episode of New Mexico Frontiers. I'm Chad Brummett. The watch on your wrist and the watch hanging on your wall suffer from what is known as clock drift. Now, due to the natural force of friction over time, a quartz clock or a conventional computer clock will need some kind of recalibration to synchronize with other conventional clocks. Atomic clocks, on the other hand, are so precise that they literally have all the time in the universe to drift just one-tenth of a second, making them the most precise timekeepers on the planet. Have you ever wondered how the GPS in your car or phone can pinpoint your exact location with increasing accuracy? Well, it's a matter of time, so to speak. Atomic time, to be precise. Utilizing the building blocks of life combined with the speed of light, atomic clocks are an integral part of global positioning and tracking. By synchronizing signals from satellites and ground-based cell towers, atomic clocks are the keystone technology behind Google Maps, Waze, and other navigation software. And for those, all this kind of application, we really need a very precise timekeeping capability in order to achieve uh, that kind of capability. The atomic clock was developed in 1947 by Harold Lyons and the National Bureau of Standards, which would later become the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST. Unlike a conventional clock, which uses astronomical events like the rising and setting of the sun, an atomic clock uses atomic oscillation. Yeah, boy! which has extremely precise and fast cycles of measurement. The best atomic out today, you lose 0.1 second for the entire lifespan of the universe, which is 13.8 billion years. Yun Yu Zhao is an atomic physicist with Sandia National Labs. He's leading one of the two teams at the labs developing the world's smallest atomic clock. Now, the labs are no stranger to the technology either. In early 2000, Sandia helped to develop the chip scale atomic clock. This device, which is a little larger than a matchbook, has been the industry standard since 2011 and is still the smallest atomic clock on the market. But Zhao says he and his colleagues are working to change that. People want something even smaller, not just smaller. So usually they, they, they talk about the size, the weight, and power. They want smaller size, lower weight, and lower power consumption. And especially, you know, for like mobile or portable application. So just how small are we talking? According to the labs, the projected size of the clock, once completed, will be about the size of a grain of rice. Zhao says that this can prove invaluable in employing atomic clocks into personal devices down the road. All right, wait, wait, wait. Didn't I say at the beginning of this story that your phone's GPS is already using the technology? Well, the answer is yes and no. While Google Maps and your car's navigation systems are using atomic clock data synchronized through satellite and control towers on the ground equipped with clocks, your device itself doesn't have the technology built into it yet. If the weather is good or you are not inside the tunnel, it's all good. You know, you, you can have very precise timing because you don't need a local device. But it's really in a situation, for example, if the weather is really bad or uh, there's some natural disasters, uh, you just lose your cell phone tower signal or you lose your satellite signal. You still want to maintain the capability of doing navigation or communication then atomic, this miniature atomic clock device can enable that, can make that happen. And this could be a game changer for more precise navigation, data collecting, and in a theater of combat, providing our troops with greater information, which could mean less time in the battlefield and American lives saved. Jow's team is making steady progress on their endeavor, and the labs project that the world's smallest atomic clock developed right here in New Mexico could be online in as little as five years. Well, coming up, meet a New Mexico Tech senior who spent his summer working with lasers. And later, how an NMSU grad is making a career for himself with yachts in the high deserts of our state. New Mexico Frontiers will be right back. Veris Research is the title sponsor of New Mexico Frontiers.
One of the tech industry's biggest challenge is finding and cultivating the next generation of talent right here in New Mexico. New Space Nexus has been working closely with space companies to develop strong internships in the field and ensure that they keep their talent here in our state. 22-year-old Derek Plummer is in his final year at New Mexico Tech. You know, I've been fortunate enough to really know what I've wanted to do with my life since eight, maybe ten. Um, you know, even as, as early as second grade in elementary school, I, I knew that I wanted to be some sort of engineer. Participating in such programs is the first Lego League. Plummer's young interest would follow him through middle and high school, taking him all the way to Japan for an international robotics competition in 2015. Mechanical engineers are supposed to be an all-around engineer. When it came time for Derek to pursue a degree, he says the decision was easy. I came into to New Mexico Tech and came into college choosing mechanical engineering um, really because I wanted a job. I wanted to be marketable. And as with many industries, part of the job seeking process is internship. Internships are a great way for Blue Halo to understand what the talent pool is out from colleges. It also gives the interns a chance to learn what Blue Halo is all about, and so we can be their preferred employer when they do graduate. Derek found his opportunity with Blue Halo, a company developing next-generation defense solutions. During his summer internship, Derek worked on a number of projects that gave him an inside look at real-world engineering applications, a lesson he says can't be found in a classroom. Internships and the education that you get from internships, I think, cannot be understated in the slightest. Derek is just one of dozens of students benefiting from internship programs across the state, a program that the nonprofit New Space Nexus believes wholeheartedly in. There are a lot of space companies that have interns that come for the summer and they, you know, some are New Mexico students, some come from elsewhere. And what this does to bring them all together is they really get to see more going on. They get excited. They get to see the resources we have here. We're just so grateful for New Space Nexus in their continued partnership and bringing these interns together so that they can network and hopefully we can advance the local New Mexico economy. Marisa Bowman, who works closely with interns at Blue Halo, says the benefits of such programs are actually a two-way street. Our engineers learn a lot from the interns. They're trained on the newest software. They're much fresher out of school. Uh, and in return, the interns get mentorship um, and hopefully come away with some networking. Among the many programs New Space Nexus is developing is their Pathways to the Stars. The initiative links K-12 through students with internship opportunities, special programming, and experiential learning, all aimed at igniting interest in STEM and space-based careers. And for interns like Derek, just months away from graduation and the start of his career, developing such a strong foundation in a competitive field is a priceless component for work with a greater purpose. When you take a second and you think about why do I work, why do I do engineering, um, you know, one of the codes of engineering is, is it sums to basically all of your work is for the betterment of society and for the betterment of the people in society. Plummer's biggest advice for other students looking to break into STEM fields, try your hardest and be bold in your internship applications. Well, still ahead on this episode of Frontiers, we are hitting the wide open seas in the high deserts of the Southwest. And later, what does the future of supercomputing look like? Sandia National Labs may have the answer. New Space is the proud aerospace sponsor of New Mexico Frontiers. When you think of New Mexico, odds are yachting is about the furthest thing from your mind. However, one New Mexico State grad was so inspired by his graduate education overseas that he is making that impossible dream a reality. Enjoying a nautical life of luxury in a landlocked state. At least that was the inspiration New Mexico State alum Ruben Mena found for an unlikely enterprise. After I graduated from NMSU in Las Cruces, I did my master's in Monaco and I studied at the International University of Monaco. And when I was studying there, I had the opportunity afterwards to work in the yachting industry. Minna, who holds a master's in luxury management, was drawn to the high-profile industry, 
one that projects a $10.8 billion reach by 2026. Many people think that because this industry is so expensive, it must be incredibly efficient. But there's a lot of communication problems in this industry. According to Mena, the industry has survived on a hodgepodge of platforms and apps like WhatsApp, email and text messaging to communicate. And when a yacht brokerage, a yacht charter brokerage is chartering 15 yachts and they're receiving all of this information from different modes of communication, things get overwhelming very quickly. That's why Mena created the software platform Yacht Notes. Developed in collaboration with Manon Meta, Yacht Notes offers one-stop solutions for chats between crew and guests, maps of the charter route, calendars showing reservations and events, as well as contact databases for stakeholders in the charter organizations. I never thought that someone like me from New Mexico would end up work would end up working in yachting, much less end up creating a company for the yachting world. But that's precisely what Mena did. Born in El Paso but raised in New Mexico, Mena was eager to bring whatever venture he pursued back to the state after finishing his master's in Monaco, a place that many people consider to be the yachting capital of the world. One of the reasons why I decided to come back to New Mexico is because New Mexico offers a lot of free resources to entrepreneurs. Sometimes we don't realize how expensive these resources are elsewhere, and they're free here. As an alum of New Mexico State University, Mena was a participant in Studio G, part of the Arrowhead Center, which helps students realize their business dreams with consulting, resources, and development assistance. Additionally, Mena has participated in a variety of startup competitions, including the Aggie Shark Tank, styled off the popular TV series, as well as the Mark Challenge in Monaco, where Yacht Notes took first place. We were very proud to not only represent Monaco, but New Mexico as well in this competition. From the king of the world! Just shy of two years old, Yacht Notes is already making waves. Mena says they're members of the prestigious Yachting Ventures, as featured in Forbes magazine, as well as the Princess Grace Foundation. While his short-term goal is to cultivate 28 yacht brokerages within the first three years, Mina is also hoping to cultivate a strong foundation for his software company in the state he calls home. I studied in Monaco and it was a great experience, but I'm really proud of being New Mexican. Um, I don't take the state for granted and um, Especially having lived in a few other countries, I appreciate New Mexico a lot more than I did before. While Mena is eyeing further growth with his company, he says that he has no plans on relocating out of state. One of the perks that he says of running a software company. When we come back, we are heading into the microscopic world of quantum mechanics to get a peek at the possible future of computing. Ditching the binary code for the building blocks of life. The future of computing has been in development for decades at Sandia National Labs, and they have recently taken a big leap forward with new technology that has a very familiar name. A lot has changed in the world of computing since 1939, when Bill Hewlett and David Packard delivered the HP Audio Oscillator 200B to Walt Disney Studios, testing new sound capabilities for their theatrical release of Fantasia. From the smallest bites of information before World War II, fast forward to 2023 and literally billions run the smartphone in your pocket. But what does the next generation of supercomputing look like? Well, this, an ion trap affectionately known as the enchilada trap, developed here at Sandia National Labs. 
It harnesses the building blocks of next-level quantum computing. A quantum computer is a very different paradigm of computing compared to what we're used to in conventional computers. The computer at your office and home runs off binary code, an infinite series of zeros and ones that do everything from creating spreadsheets to creating this very story you're watching right now. Quantum computers, on the other hand, harness the technology of the natural world and thus can solve incredibly difficult, nuanced equations that even the most robust conventional computers simply couldn't touch. They are exponentially faster than a classical computer and they can solve problems in a reasonable amount of time that a conventional computer couldn't solve even if it had the age of the universe to perform it on. Daniel Stick is a physicist with Sandia and he says the labs have been testing ion traps since the mid-2000s, developing nearly 30 predecessors to the enchilada trap. Harnessing the trapped ions to store information in qubits, quantum computers can tackle complex problems in exponentially shorter amounts of time. We live in a quantum world where quantum mechanics defines how these different chemical um, interactions happen. And so uh, we make a lot of pro uh, approximations with our classical computers. A quantum computer, however, can uh, simulate those things with greater accuracy because it itself is quantum. This could mean a better battery for a more carbon neutral footprint, decoding and encoding complex encryptions, and a more accurate understanding of new medications, which could help cure crippling disease or get ahead of the next global pandemic with faster vaccinations. So since the mid 90s, there's really been a proliferation of research on uh, making those qubits better, developing new qubits, and then over the last 10 years really trying to engineer them so that you can make bigger systems. But don't get your heart set on bringing home a quantum computer for yourself anytime soon, or ever. As Stick says, they require a great amount of hardware to run and are, at this point anyway, only useful for a small subset of problems. But the development of quantum computers, which could have global implications in the near future, is an important part of the work being done at Sandia. We have many experimentalists, both in the ion trapping world, but also in uh, other technologies. We have a number of theorists who work in this field. Uh, and UNM have, has an excellent department uh, in where there are a lot of experts that are world renowned in quantum computing. And so it's a, it's a big deal for New Mexico and a place where the state really excels. Sandia and Duke University are research partners through the Quantum Systems Accelerator, one of just five research centers funded by the DOE's Office of Science. Well, that's going to do it for us here on this episode of New Mexico Frontiers. If you would like more information or a recap of this entire show, just head over to krqe.com. Thanks for joining us.